Right, I think it's about time we get you that PB. So welcome to a baking hot London all around us. It's about 35 degrees, nearly 100 Fahrenheit, but I've got some great tips coming up. So stay tuned, let's do this. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in today for another hopefully fun and great episode to get you a half marathon PB. So my name is Ben Parks, 67 minute half marathoner. So yeah, run quite a few over the years and yeah, I've got loads of tips and tricks, well 10 exactly, to get you that PB. So sit back, grab a pen, grab a pen and paper, make lots of notes as we go along. Right, let's get stuck into this. Let's go. We're going to need to do some serious training to get that PB in. So the structure of a week is going to be really important. Now, of course, I'm going to say, yes, we sell dedicated training plans, really helpful to get you that really good structure for your week. We sell them on the website. So if you're interested, check out those links below. If you want to do things yourself, you're going to need four key elements. So the first thing you're going to need is a nice, gentle, easy or recovery run, some low heart rate running. For a lot of people, generally sub 150 beats a minute. It's just going to help build that athletic endurance and help you recover from the other sessions that you're doing. Secondly, we're going to want a nice weekend long run in there as well. And ideally adding in a little bit of pace work into that run. So it might be 5k nice and relaxed and maybe two or 3k at your goal pace and just alternate that for anything up to around about 15 up to about 20k for your longest runs. Also, you're going to want to add in potentially a little bit of a fartlek or a tempo run, maybe not every week, but once every couple of weeks. And finally, the most important thing, having a speed session in there. This is really going to help build that fitness that you're going to need to get that PB. We'll come on to some great sessions next. Right guys, let's talk about some sessions that are gonna get you that PB. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is some intervals. So what I'd recommend is do something around about six by three minutes. And the pace you wanna be running these at is between your five and 10K pace. So take, yeah, sort of work that out roughly where it's gonna be. As I always say, uh, download our link to our pacing chart. So if you want some ideas, download our free pacing chart on the website. So six by three minutes, add between your 5K and 10K pace and take a two minute recovery between each rep. The second uh, session I'd recommend is a, a progressive run. So we want to start these out nice and easy for the first couple of Ks, then move up into maybe sort of around about our marathon pace, and then move up again to half marathon pace. And then we want to be finishing around about our 10K pace. So every kilometer or every mile is just getting slightly quicker. It's a little bit easier working these in kilometers. So yeah, you're just trying to get starting out sort of below your goal pace and running around about your goal pace and then finishing up a little bit ahead of, ahead of your goal pace. Beginner about 4K, um, intermediate about 6K and more advanced about 8K. The final thing I'd recommend is doing some hill repeats. So around about 45 to 60 seconds, running hard up the hill and then walking back down. The secret to hills is all in the recovery, in my opinion. So nice and relaxed on the way down and then really power on the way up. There is no perfect hill. I suppose if you really had to say, you're talking about something around about sort of six, 7%, but yeah, just find a decent hill that you can run up at a nice steady effort that's near you and just get the session done is what it's all about. So let me know down in the comments, what is your favorite session to do? And we'll share some great session ideas. Yeah, let me know down below. Right guys, so to run a fast half marathon time, you've got to find a good course and a good course is a fast course. So what I really recommend is studying and reading a lot of race reports about good races out there. So courses I like, Great North Run, Reading Half, Oxford Half, Woking Half, Ealing Half, Bath Half, Manchester Half, as always, guys, let me know down in the comments some great races. They're very much like Southeast UK focused because that's where I'm from. They're the races I know. So let me, me know what is what is a great course for you. Where have you run your PBs? Share the love and we'll see that down in the comments. So yeah, read reports and look at the elevation profile. See if you can find something that's nice and flat. Also talking about support on the course, good aid stations, good water supplies, good nutrition that they're giving out. It all makes for a really good positive race day experience. So yeah, let me know what's your favorite favorite race down below. 
So moving on, to get that PB, you're gonna be want to ru be running with really nice, good form, because with good form comes good efficiency and we can cover the ground really, really well. So how are we gonna get good form? Well, I've got three things to really work on. So first thing is drills. Really, really good, they help improve your form. That's why I'm putting them in here. I'll link to my dedicated drills video down below, so check it out. Secondly, strides. Adding strides in at the end of some of your easy runs, just once or twice a week, essentially about 100 meters or about 20 seconds of really fast running and then recover for 20 seconds or so and then go again for beginners just two or three of these um, at the end of an easy run more intermediate um, four or five more advanced up to about sort of seven or eight really help to run with good form because if you're running that fast 95 percent effort you'll be running with good form and thirdly hill repeats really good for improving uh, yeah again improving your form because it's really Really hard to run with bad form when we're running at effort uphill. Right guys, moving on, we need to practice at our race pace because we need to know what that race pace is gonna feel like on race day. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we may want to drop in, as I said, in those uh, how to structure a week, some little tempo runs. So yeah, it might be sort of a mile or two warm up, three or four miles at your goal pace, and then a little cool down at the end. Alternatively, what I'd suggest is building some of these into your long run. So yeah, it might be essentially three or four miles or sort of five or six K, nice and easy, and then just move into your race pace for a couple of K or a couple of miles there, and then dial it back again. And just alternating this easy race pace, easy race pace is really good. You just be practicing what it's gonna be like on race day. It never feels that easy, so don't worry if it feels like a little bit of an effort. But yeah, practice at race pace for race day success. So what do I mean by cross training? Well, essentially what I recommend you doing is once or twice a week, just do some body weight exercises at home. I'll come on to weighted ones in a minute. So essentially planks, clams, calf raises, squats, bridges. Now, if you do want to add some weights to that, you can do, you can have a kettlebell or something and do some weighted calf raises and things. That's gonna help and it will really help sort of strengthen up your calf muscles, but build into that after a few weeks of just doing some body weight calf raises. And finally, I'd say in terms of when to do this, do this on your easy run days and keep your rest days as complete rest days so your body can rest and recover. Right guys, moving on to the mental side. Dealing with what's going on up here is really important for that race day success. So essentially, when you start a training plan, you're gonna be thinking, oh God, I can't do this. This is really difficult. I'm never gonna be able to run at that pace. But follow through all your training, follow that training plan, and you're gonna be putting yourself in uncomfortable situations that come race day will feel a hell of a lot easier. So don't worry about it too much at this stage. It's all about putting yourself in that discomfort in your training, pushing yourself to the limit. And then yeah, come race day, it's all kind of second nature. And you'll be thinking, I've done all this before, I've put in all the hard work and it's gonna be okay. You also might want to build in a little 10K race in the build up. Maybe do that yourself in a little time trial or an actual organized race. Again, you might want to suggest is doing that at your goal pace for the half marathon. It's just gonna get you used to it, get used to the race day atmosphere, what it all feels like and how it's all working. And yeah, just build your confidence that mentally on the day you can do it. And you can, don't worry. Right guys, moving on to nutrition. Really gonna be key to fuel yourself through that PB performance. So what I recommend is come race day, you're gonna be wanting taking in some sort of um, carbohydrate gel around about every 30 to 40 minutes on race day. And of course, you wanna practice with your preferred brand and what you like to use and experiment with a few different types of manufacturers, a few different types of gels in your on your long runs, in your training, getting used to your body taking on that fuel that it needs for the run. In terms of liquids and drinks, yeah, there's lots of sports drinks out there. If it's hot, you wanna be looking at some sort of electrolytes, adding those into your drinks as well. But essentially water, I've always found water and just sipping little little sips as you go around on the race step on the course is just kind of the best thing for me. But of course, with all these things, it's about you practicing and finding your routine. What works for me might work really well for you or it might not. So practice with your gels and with your water and your fluids 
practice as much as you can. In terms of carbohydrate loading and thing for the race, yes, it's, it's kind of important, not quite as important when it comes to marathons, but I recommend the day before the race, have a big sort of carbohydrate meal, but don't do it really late at night. Just do it around about 4 or 5 p.m. in the evening and then maybe top up with something very small just before bed and your body's got time to digest it all properly and you're gonna be getting a good night's sleep, which is probably more important than all the carbohydrates as well. And then come race day morning, again, don't be, don't be chucking everything down. For me, I just like to have a one or maybe two uh, peanut butter and jam on my bagels, and that will suit me fine for race day. Right guys, so we're nearly here, nearly race day, but we've got to get through the taper first. So yeah, how are we going to taper for the half marathon? Usually around about seven to 10 days is going to be perfect tapering for the half marathon. So what I'd recommend is just dropping your distance down ever so slightly and also dropping the intensity. For a final session to do, usually do this on a Tuesday or Wednesday if your goal race is going to be on the Sunday. And we do a simple four by five minutes at your goal pace for the weekend with around about a two minute sort of jog or even a walk recovery between it. Again, just about practicing that race pace, seeing what it's going to be feeling like for race day. And also you've got to really focus on your sleep, getting as much of that in as you possibly can. Not easy with today's modern world. And also speak to your family and friends, make sure where they know where they're going on the race day, plan your route to the course, plan how you're going to be getting there um, on race day as well. And yeah, your strategy, how are you going to be pacing on the day? We'll come to that in the next point. And finally, practicing runs in your race day kit is going to be really important as well. So by the time you get there, you've got everything ticked and crossed and dotted. So you know that you'll be perfectly ready to go on race day morning. Right guys, so race day is here. You're really excited. How are we gonna deal with race day pacing? How are you gonna get that goal? What I recommend for the first about one to five miles is just try and keep things relaxed and controlled. Don't go off too fast as so many people do. You'll be running just below your goal pace. Just get into that rhythm and get things turning over nicely. Then between sort of five to 10 miles is when it gets a little bit tough. You wanna be going obviously now at your goal pace, picking it up a little bit. It's gonna be hard and things are gonna be getting a little bit difficult at this stage. But yeah, lots of coping mechanisms that I've adopted over the years. Just weird things like counting from one to a hundred. So monotonous, just in your head. It takes your, takes your head out of it a little bit. Listen to some music if you're allowed, if you've got some aftershocks things and you're allowed to, listening to music. Um, yeah, talk to other people around you. If you've got a few people around, um, think about all of your friends and family, the people you might be raising money for and that sort of thing as well. And think back most importantly to all the hard training sessions that, that you've done, giving it your all and that's why you're here in this moment. This is your moment to shine. And then when you get to that sort of 10 to 13 miles park run to go, 5K to go, this is just when you've got to get your head down, you pump up your chest, you can do it, and you've just got to give it your all. This is when to, you know, open the taps and really sort of give it your all. So yeah, basically a little bit below goal pace at the start, at goal pace, and then ideally just bring it home at the end and just push ahead of that goal pace to get you that PB. And I know you can do it. There we have it guys, hopefully you really enjoyed those tips and if I've missed anything, as always, let me know down in the comments below and add your top tips there to help out everybody. So yeah, I'm off to do some more training to get ready because we're hopefully gonna be back racing again very soon. And yeah, thank you for the support with the channel, everyone that's liking these videos and yeah, subscribing. The channel's just blown up so much recently. I thank you so much for that. We've got these amazing new t-shirts um, in three colors now as well on the website. And of course, all the running hats. And we've just launched our brand new legend running hat as well. It's been going down really well. So thank you for all the positive feedback on that. Right, nothing really else left to say. Thank you guys. Thank you to the Patreon supporters. Thank you for all the support on the channel. Go out and get that PB. And of course, let me know about it. Tag me on Strava. I'd love to see it. And yeah, that's it. Enjoy your running, keep on getting it done, working hard, and we'll see you in the next one.